Hello, it is April at last. I say at last, it feels like it's come racing. It was January for ages, and then kind of February dragged a bit. March happened in an instant. It's like it never even happened, and now it's April. So yeah, it's April. And April is an absolutely bonkers month for seed sowing. Like basically, most things can go in in April. So it's just gonna be like, on the treadmill of seed sowing. It does mean that I've got an awful lot to get through. I've just been kind of like sorting seeds into piles for what I'm sowing for April and like my desk is just chaos. Yeah, I mean, there's masses of them and I'll include a list underneath in the notes just detailing them all because as well as the veg, there's loads of flowers. I mean, I'm gonna talk about some, but I can't mention them all, so. So I've got quite a lot to get through in this video. So I'm really hoping I'm not just rambling at like Formula One speed, so. Uh, I would say stop me if I'm talking too fast, but it doesn't really work like that on a recording, does it? First thing to get out of the way is for me where I am, the beginning of April is about my last chance to sow any extra tomato seeds that I want to get in. Um, other places I think you can probably go to the end of May, but for me, if I don't get them in before the beginning of April, really they're not gonna do what they need to do later in the year. So beginning of April is kind of like cut off for tomatoes. So I'm going to try to break this down into kind of segments so it's not just like a complete ramble. So I'm going to start off with the cucurbits and that kind of like basically April is the cucurbit month for me. It's like the month where all of that stuff starts going in. Early in the month, it's cucumbers. I'm growing this one, which I just call Mandurian cucumber, but it, it looks very green on the packet, but it's actually a really, really pale egg shaped one with an incredibly thin skin and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna be growing that one. And I'm also doing kind of the standard Socrates, which is a fairly small cucumber. I don't tend to grow the large ones because every year that we've grown large ones, we've been kind of inundated with them. And um, yeah, although I do love cucumber, there's sort of only so much cucumber you can get through. And a rotten cucumber in the salad drawer of your fridge is, really not something anybody needs because it's rank. So yeah, early in April is when I sow my cucumbers. And then later in April, so the second half of April, I will start sowing my pumpkins, courgettes, marrows, that kind of thing. So I'm growing quite a lot of courgettes this year. My absolute favourite variety is a variety called green tiger, which I haven't been able to get hold of any seeds this year. So I'm going to be just doing a standard all green one, which is called all green bush, which I, it's a really bog standard one, but I find that they're really nice because the plants are really quite compact. There's also a stripy one called striata and a golden one called golden griller. And I'm also doing a couple of round ones. I've got this one, which I particularly love the title of, basically a nice round fruit, I think. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm doing this one and I've also got a round one called Satellite. I'm doing a couple of patty pans. There's a dark green one called Patterson Gagat. I did this one last year. It was a real success and it was really delicious. And sometimes I get a bit funny with patty pans because um, I don't like how seedy they get. Some of the ones, the yellow ones like the Sunburst, I find them really seedy in the middle and I don't like the texture of that. So, but Patterson Gagat was gorgeous. And I'm also doing Benning's Green Tint, which is a kind of a pale bluish colored one. So that is my courgettes. I'm doing a marrow this year. Last year, my plot neighbor um, grew loads of courgettes and just let them go because he wasn't around lockdown and all that kind of stuff so he ended up with like you know the big courgettes when you let them go too far and so and he was getting rid so I thought I'd have them and I was doing quite a few stuffed marrows last year and I just thought they were really really delicious so I'm doing an actual marrow this year in terms of pumpkins I'm doing my ultimate favorite which is crown prince which I still have never found a pumpkin squash that tastes anywhere near as good as it I just think it is the king of the pumpkins beautiful great flavor looks fantastic and uh, yeah so i'm doing crown prints i'm also doing a butternut this year and i'm hoping it is actually going to be a butternut because i don't know if you remember last year so last year i grew two butternut squash two crown prints and two something else i can't remember well it turned out none of them were butternut i mean they just came out the ones that were meant to be the two butternuts that were on the end were like kind of these amorphous blue blobs so this year i'm going with a different variety <laughs> hopefully it is actually a butternut 
which is just a standard wolf and butternut. So I'm really got high hopes for them. I'm growing the pumpkins quite separate this time. So the butternut will be planted kind of at the opposite end of the allotment from the others. So I should be able to tell because before it all got very confusing when none of them were like they were meant to be. So yeah, wolf and butternut. I'm also doing Dechogia, which I think is marvellous. Somebody else on the allotment grew this last year and said it was just an absolute winner. So doing that chat. And I'm doing something that I've never grown before, but I have eaten, which is a baked potato squash, um, which has, um, you kind of bake the whole thing. And then when you scoop it out, it's got the texture of baked potato. And I had some of this um, that somebody else grew last year and it was really delicious. So I'm giving that a go. And yeah, basically that is uh, what I'm growing in terms of the cucurbits. And this is the first chance of sowing. If it's too cold where you are, don't worry about it. All of these have to be started inside anyway, but you've got April, end of April, all the way through May, and all of them are gonna be fine. Sometimes when we've had a bit of a dodgy year in terms of weather, I'll start some courgettes in end of April and I'll start another lot in the end of May. And if we've had a bit of a dodgy weather spell in the middle, I've always got a backup set. Sowing them at the end of May, uh, they've still got plenty of time. They grow so quickly, they'll be absolutely fine. Okay, on to brassicas. Quite a lot of brassicas that I sowed in March can still be sown now. So that's things like Cavalier Nero, Purple Sprouting Broccoli, a lot of the cabbages. All of them can still be sown now with no problems whatsoever. Getting a bit later, so I haven't sown any of these yet, I will be sowing my kales. I've got two curly kales this year. I know I said I wasn't gonna grow the dwarf one again, but actually it's really come into its own this spring. So we're gonna be sowing some more of that. And I've also got a scarlet one. So that'll be my two curly kales this year that will go along with the Cavalanero, which is the Tuscan black kale. And I will have a normal kale, which is like the less curly one as well. But I haven't got the seeds for that yet, but you can sow all of them now. Okay, another April sowing, celery and celeriac. I do already have some in, which will be going in, but I'll be doing another lot in April. It's quite interesting, actually, the celery that we've got from last year, we were doing harvesting around the outside rather than harvesting the whole lot, which means that we've still got the plants in there. And I've got two quite solid rows of them. I'm gonna take one of those rows out and just make a load of celery soup. And then the other row we're actually gonna leave in and allow it to flower because they're biennials. They um, grow one year and then they produce seed the next year. So we're going to try and get ourselves some celery seed, which should be quite nice. The celeriac, we're still eating last year's now. So wherever you do plant them, make sure you plant them somewhere that you know they're gonna be there for at least a year. So we sowed ours, well, it was this time last year, so April last year, and we're still eating the ones that we sowed last year. We've still got about five or six left. So yeah, that's one of those ones which is gonna be in the ground for quite a long time. So choose your site carefully. Okay, on to alliums. I've started a lot of my leeks inside, which I will then transfer out. But for some of the really big leeks, it's not too late to start them outdoors in April. I'm not going to be getting any more of those in because I rather got overexcited and I've got absolutely masses of them. So something that's quite interesting, I know I go on about nipper leeks quite often. They're the really skinny ones. But in terms of when you can sow them, this is about the last point really to start sowing the big leeks for them to get any kind of size for the winter. So April is about the last sort of time you can sow the larger leeks, but things like nipper. So if you look at the back of the packet of these two, and we're looking at the dark green bit here and here, can you see that these ones have a really short time to sow them and the nipper you can just keep sowing. So I will repeat sow nipper all the way up until July time. Last chance on the big leeks. Got loads of time for successional sowing on the small stuff. So talking about the successional sowing, April is also the month where I'm normally getting my second or third sowing in of some things. But obviously, even though it's my second, third sowing, like that's absolutely fine. It can be first sowing, second sowing, whatever. They're all still things which are totally great to get going in April. They're things like beetroot. I've already got two sets of beetroot in. I have got Boldor and a plain red one, which is Detroit Rubridus 6. And I'm going to be putting my next two in, which are going to be Choggia and Detroit Crimson Globe. 
So I will do them two varieties each, just keep alternating them. For, so I did my first sewing in March, I'm gonna do second one April, and I'll sew them all the way through till July, every couple of weeks. Exactly the same goes for carrots. I've put in my early, I'm gonna say it, nanties. Sorry, I know it's early nance, but I um, but it's a bit like saying mange tout instead of mange too. I can't I can't help myself. <laughs> I just find it amusing, and then it's very difficult when you say it on YouTube because people correct you, and then you're like, oh bugger, I said that, didn't I? Yeah, but I know it's early nance. I just uh, early nanties. Um, and then the two that I'm going to be succession sewing, so I'm going to be doing the same way with the beetroot, alternating the varieties that I'm sewing every three weeks or so. So my April sewings are going to be these two, which is Touchon, which is my all time favourite carrot. And I'm also doing Jean Obtuse, de Dubes, I love the de Dubes, which is a yellow carrot, which I think is going to be really delicious. I haven't ever grown this one before, but I've heard really good things about it. And I've also heard it's less affected by carrot root fly than some of the orange ones. I mean, I've got the box, I'm going to be covering them, but if you don't, if you're not able to cover them, maybe this one might be a good idea to go for. And in exactly the same vein as the beetroot and the carrots, I'm going to be doing the third sowing of turnips. I'm doing Petrovsky, which is yellow, Snowball, which is white, and Purple Top Milan, which, as the name suggests, has a purple top. And also talking about my pronunciation of things, I'm doing some more chard. And somebody pointed out to me something which I have never noticed about this chard, which I've been calling Lucillus. And I put it, when I write it out, I spell it L-U-C-I-L-L-U-S. Lucillus. Well, somebody said to me it's Lucullus. And I was like, it doesn't say Lucullus. When I actually read the packet, it obviously says Lucullus, like I just, I read it wrong the first time and you know what it's like, then you just like are going to call it that forever. Um, so to me it's Lucillus chard, but it's quite clearly Lucullus, so please accept my apologies if that's been winding you up. <laughs> I will uh, go back and correct all my labelling, but I am going to be putting some more of this in this month. We are eating the stuff that I sewed in September at the moment. It's looking lush and spectacular. I sewed some of this in February and I'm doing April and then I'll do June and uh, just keep going with it. It's really dependent on the weather. If it gets really, really hot, it can bolt. You know, there's a lot of different things. So when I'm doing the succession sewing, I always think of it as, yes, I want to spread out the amount of crop that I'm having throughout the year. So I don't just have like one month where I'm just only eating beetroot and I'm like catching up with myself trying to eat everything that I've got growing so I just do a few spread them out really nicely and also if we get some dodgy weather which unfortunately we do seem to be getting more and more frequently if you're kind of spacing them out you tend to avoid crop complete wipeout if we have a bit of a weird patch so kind of spreading not putting all your eggs in one basket basically there's so many other things that can go in in April, uh, lettuces, masses of lettuces. I've got one tray of them growing at the moment, but I'll be getting another tray of them towards the end of April for succession sowing again. Another thing I'm going to be sowing this year is the tree spinach, which is something I tried last year and I absolutely loved. So tree spinach is a vegetable which is a very close relative of um, goosefoot which is a weed uh, well I say it's a weed I mean you can still eat that just as well but it's a pink variety of that um, I thought it was a raging success last year and I thought it was absolutely delicious so I'm going to be doing it again I had been warned that it self seeds like a crazy so I was really really diligent about cutting off any flower heads that appeared and getting rid before they became seeds so not expecting to have like a whole allotment full of uh, pink goose foot this year but I thought it was an absolutely delicious vegetable it was uh, a very very strong tasting spinach which had a sort of smoky flavour, um, cooked down really well. It made the best aloo gobi I've probably ever eaten. I made samosas from it. Pea and tree spinach samosas were mm, 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 mm. And last year with them, because it was the first year I'd ever grown them, I grew five plants out in the sunshine, five plants in the shade, uh, because I wasn't really sure how they were gonna grow. And that turned out to be an absolute gem of a thing to do because the ones that are in the sunshine 
were pickable really, really fast and the ones in the shade kind of slowed down. And so I was able to pick alternately and they kind of filled the whole gap. So I was able to strip the plants off the sunshine one and then pick the shade one and kind of alternate and it worked a dream. Parsnips, you can also sew parsnips. I'm gonna be starting my white gem ones. I started Palace, which is an earlier variety. In March, I'm gonna be doing white gem in April, I'm gonna be pre-sprouting them on kitchen roll before I put them in. Parsnips are notorious for pretty pants germination. So um, normally you kind of sew two or three to a hole, but last year I sewed two or three to a hole and like I had like 100% germination, which is typical. And parsnips don't transfer because it's a taproot vegetable. So, so I'm gonna lay them out first on a wet piece of kitchen roll, a little bit like pre-sprouting the peas see which ones are going to do something and see which ones aren't and then I'll just plant the ones which are in action mode and then I should have pretty uh, guaranteed germination on them. April is sweet corn sowing month for me, I will start them in root trainers. They're, they work really well in root trainers because they're really packed in tightly and they're obviously a grass so they just grow straight up. I will be getting them in this month as well but probably later in the month. Oh, radish, radish, you can get radish in, um, spinach, did I mention spinach? You can do spinach too. <sighs> spring onions, did I talk about spring onions? And if you watched last week's vlog, you will have seen me planting out my peas, uh, which was, um, which I pre-sprout and I'll be doing some more of them this week. I've actually planted some yesterday. Always pre-sprout my peas. If you're interested in how that kind of happens, I'll stick the thing me bobby up here to link to that video. I did a special about peas. Was it last Saturday? Can't remember. Fairly recently I did one about peas anyway and I'm pre-sprouting them. This was something that I discovered a couple of years ago and it's just basically changed how I grow peas. Uh, it's just so easy and it was somebody who pre-sprouted too many on their allotment and gave me some and it was a complete revelation so now I always do that. So I've put one lot in already and the next lot that I will be putting in are golden sweet monge too and tall telephone peas. And talking of peas, April is also a mammoth month for a ma mammoth month. A mammoth month for sowing flowers. So I will also be putting my sweet peas in now. I know a lot of people have already got their sweet peas going, but I ordered some. Uh, in fact, I ordered them on a vlog. Absolutely, absolutely age, absolutely ages ago, and they just never arrived. And it was only when I went to sow them like last month or like late February, I was like, hold on a minute. They never actually arrived so and when i went back i'd been refunded for them they'd obviously run out and i didn't notice so i didn't have any so i've gone out and bought some more and i've got these two to go in so i'm really looking forward to them i'm going to be pre-sprouting them and growing them exactly the same way as uh, is demonstrated in that pea video i've also got masses of saved seed of the sweet peas which were a um, purple and pink variety so i'm hoping they're all going to come up as well so i'll have Plenty sweet peas, but they're going in this month. I'm also going to be sowing uh, nasturtiums, which is in a similar kind of situation to the sweet peas. I always get masses of self-sown nasturtiums because I grow them every year, obviously, and they mix around and then they just come up all over the place. So I'm going to be transferring them as soon as they come up. I mean, the thing with nasturtium seedlings is that I really don't mind them self-seeding everywhere because they're such a distinctive seedling. You know what they are immediately. You just pop them out, either stick them in a pot if you don't know where you want them yet, or just, you know, shuffle them to the edges of the beds or whatever. But I'm adding to my gene pool this year with a couple of really like, you know, you can tell that I'm going for the subtle colours this year, can't you? Um, I've got this mix, which is summer carousel. So just like yellow and pink, get it out there, throw some orange in. These are a bit ruffly. You see, they've got kind of double petals. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing nasturtiums this month. Basically, there's so many flowers this month. I'm getting the Cosmos in. This will be the second load of Cosmos because I got some in last month, but it's not too late for Cosmos. I'll be throwing the Nigella seed down. I've got black corn flowers to get in the ground. I'll be putting some more Rebecca in. You can sow Rebecca much, much earlier than this, like starting right at the beginning of the year. Uh, but I've been <laughs> holding out because I grew some last year that are meant to come back perennial ones and I've been waiting to see if they're sprouting so far they're not <laughs> so I'm going to sow some more it's not too late for that 
I'm also going to be sowing a second load of sunflowers. I've got a massive one, Russian giant, and also one that's called claret, which is uh, kind of like a dark red, uh, which produces a lot of sunflowers on the one stem rather than just, you know, like the shower head type. I'm also going to be getting the poppies in and the lickness. I've got masses of lickness uh, in the front garden and the back, but it's the normal one, which is the really, really bright, bright pink, almost like neon purple flowers um, with whole petals. So I've got this one, which is like got stringy petals. So that's going to be really nice to throw in with the mix. I've got some flowering chicory marigolds are going in i've got calendula to go in which was saved seed in these gorgeous little bags from the free seed company which i absolutely love um yeah i've just got masses and masses to sow but yeah basically guys april is a nuts month for seed sowing a lot of herbs coriander can be started now the mint parsley <laughs> to be honest I think it would have been easier if I just did a video which is what not to sow in April because everything basically sew it all sew away <laughs> anyway I hope that was useful the next vlog which is coming out on Tuesday is going to be vlog number 52 which I'm really excited about it means we've done a whole year of vlogging at the allotment and uh it's just going to be basically a massive thank you to everybody uh, and a bit of drinking, which is, you know, what's, what's better than that? So we're going to be having our celebration for the year of the vlog or tomorrow, which is Sunday. It would have been Monday because that's kind of closer to the Tuesday, but uh, Monday's meant to get really, really cold. So we've got kind of a good day today, better day tomorrow, which is Sunday. And then Monday, we're going to fall off a cliff into freezing weather. <laughs> yay so uh, we're going to be having our bit of celebration on sunday so i will see you then but i'll see you on tuesday but it'll be sunday i'll see you tuesday i'll see you tuesday see you later chaps <laughs>